Hi guys! In this video, we'll be looking at conditions for nuclear fusion, nuclear fusion reactions, energy released from fusion, nuclear fusion on Earth, and then we'll finish with a summary. The process of nuclear fusion requires certain conditions. In nuclear fusion, two small nuclei come together or fuse to form a larger, more stable nucleus and some other particles. So we begin with two small nuclei which come together in the process of nuclear fusion to form a larger and more stable nucleus. In order to fuse, two nuclei must be close enough for the short-range strong nuclear force to attract them into a larger nucleus. So in order for the strong nuclear force to act and pull these two nuclei together, they must be a very short distance apart. And this short distance is approximately 0.8 femtometers. Remember that one femtometer is 1 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. However, this is difficult to do because all nuclei are positively charged and so they naturally repel each other. So because both of them have the same charge, a positive charge due to the protons inside them, they're going to experience an electrostatic force of repulsion. And this means that in order to fuse, two nuclei must collide at a high speed to overcome the electrostatic force of repulsion. So the speed of these nuclei coming together must be high in order for them to fuse together and form a larger nucleus. This means that very high temperatures are required to give the nuclei high enough kinetic energy to fuse. These high temperatures are approximately 1.4 times 10 to the 7 Kelvin. And this high temperature will give the nucleus a high kinetic energy and therefore a high speed. Very high densities are also required to ensure a high number of fusion events takes place per second. And these high densities are approximately 1.5 times 10 to the 5 kilograms per meters cubed. Now that we've learned about the conditions for nuclear fusion, we can look at some nuclear fusion reactions. An example of nuclear fusion is two protons fusing together to produce a deuterium nucleus, a beta plus particle and an electron neutrino. So we start with two protons, which have a proton number of one and a nucleon number of one. These can fuse together to form a deuterium nucleus. A deuterium nucleus is the nucleus of an isotope of hydrogen. It's special because it has one proton, but also one neutron. So it has a nucleon number of two. This process also produces a beta plus particle which has a proton number of 1 and a nucleon number of 0, and an electron neutrino. This reaction releases about 2.2 mega electron volts of energy. The deuterium nucleus can then fuse with another proton to produce a helium-3 nucleus, releasing about 5.5 mega electron volts of energy. So we start with our deuterium nucleus with two nucleons and one proton and we add a proton which will form a helium-3 nucleus and a helium-3 nucleus has three nucleons two protons and one neutron so its proton number is therefore two and in the process 5.5 mega electron volts of energy are released then two helium-3 nuclei can fuse to give a helium-4 nucleus as well as two protons which releases 12.9 mega electron volts of energy. So we have our two helium nuclei with three nucleons and two protons which fuse together to form a helium-4 nucleus and produce two protons. This process releases around 12.9 mega electron volts of energy. The two protons that are produced in this reaction can then fuse together and the whole cycle of nuclear fusion reactions is repeated. So remember we started off with two protons fusing together to form a deuterium nucleus. And the deuterium nucleus can fuse with a proton to form a helium-3 nucleus. Two of these helium-3 nuclei fuse together to form helium-4 and two protons, which can then fuse together in exactly the same way as the first step of this cycle. So the cycle repeats itself. This is what 
what's known as a proton-proton cycle or a hydrogen burning cycle and is part of the nuclear fusion reactions taking place in the sun. There are many nuclear fusion reactions taking place in the sun's core and this is just part of the whole process. In the equations for nuclear fusion reactions, they all had some energy released and we're now going to look in a bit more detail at this energy that's released from fusion. When two small nuclei undergo fusion, the resultant nucleus is found to have a larger binding energy than the reactant nuclei. So here we have two reactant nuclei that fuse together to form a product nucleus. The reactants have a smaller binding energy and the product has a larger binding energy. Therefore, the energy that's released in a nuclear fusion reaction is given by the difference in binding energies between the reactants and the products. So the difference in binding energies is given by delta Be. And we can say that the energy released is equal to the binding energy of the products minus the binding energy of the reactants. For example, use the information given in the table to calculate the energy released in mega electron volts when a helium-3 nucleus fuses with a helium-4 nucleus to form a beryllium-7 nucleus. And in the table we have the three particles and their binding energy per nucleon. Our first step is to write down the formula for energy released in terms of the binding energies of the products and reactants. And this formula states that energy released is equal to the binding energy of the products minus the binding energy of the reactants. Now let's write down the formula for binding energy per nucleon. The binding energy per nucleon is equal to the binding energy of the nucleus divided by the nucleon number. Let's rearrange to find the binding energy of a nucleus from its binding energy per nucleon. So the binding energy of a nucleus is equal to the binding energy per nucleon times the nucleon number. And now we need to find the binding energies of the nuclei involved. These nuclei are helium-3, helium-4 and beryllium-7. And we can check back by looking at the table to see that the binding energy per nucleon for helium-3 is 2.57 mega electron volts. And the binding energy per nucleon for helium-4 is 7.07 .07 mega electron volts. Finally, the binding energy per nucleon for beryllium-7 is 5.37 mega electron volts. And now we need to multiply by the nucleon number for each of the nuclei. So for helium-3, the nucleon number is 3. For helium-4, the nucleon number is 4. And for beryllium-7, the nucleon number is 7, which gives us the following binding energies. 7.71 mega electron volts for helium-3, 28.28 mega electron volts for helium-4 is equal to 37.59 mega electron volts. Our final step is to substitute to find the change in total binding energy and hence the energy released. So the energy released is equal to the binding energy of the products, which is 37.59 mega electron volts, minus the binding energy of the reactants which is the sum of 7.71 mega electron volts and 28.28 mega electron volts. And therefore, the energy released is 1.6 mega electron volts. We know that nuclear fusion occurs in the sun, but does it happen on Earth? It would be a useful way of generating energy. But there are currently no power stations that use a nuclear fusion reactor to generate electricity. We only use nuclear fission. And this is because it's very difficult to maintain very high temperatures for long enough to sustain fusion. So the high temperatures that are required for fusion to occur are difficult to sustain over a long period of time. There have been prototype fusion reactors, such as the JET or Joint European Taurus, and these have produced large amounts of power but only for short periods of time. And here's a depiction of what the JET looks like. However, the energy output of such prototype fusion reactors has never exceeded the energy input. So it's not energetically favourable to produce electricity using this method. Because we've not yet managed to produce more energy than we put in. Energy is released from the JET 
when a deuterium nucleus and a tritium nucleus fuse to make a helium-4 nucleus and a neutron. So we already know that deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen with two nucleons and one proton. And this fuses with tritium, which is another isotope of hydrogen, but this time it has three nucleons and one proton. And this can fuse together to make helium-4 as well as a neutron. In this process, around 17.6 mega electron volts of energy are released. And one advantage of the fusion process over the fission process is that it doesn't produce any radioactive waste. The neutrons are absorbed by a lithium blanket around the reactor, which produces more helium-4 and tritium nuclei. So the blanket of lithium has six nucleons and three protons, and it can absorb these neutrons to produce more helium-4 as well as tritium, which is what we need to start the reaction. So you can see that this process is cyclical because the tritium nuclei are recycled and used for more fusion reactions with deuterium. So this reaction produces tritium, which is what's needed for more fusion reactions. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap by smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.